Who out there remembers the Kia Niro? If you don't, don't worry, you're not alone. This tiny compact crossover hatchback looking Kia wasn't anything to think twice about. Well, this is the new Niro and it comes in three flavors, including a Hev, a Fev, and a Bev. My name is Omar and today I'm gonna to show you the all new 2023 Kia Niro. Let's go. All right, the new Kia Niro. To be completely honest, I never gave the last Niro much thought. I felt like it was kind of just hidden in Kia's lineup behind the Telluride, the Sportage, and the Optima. I mean, K5. Well, things are about to change for the Niro. It gets all the new Kia touches, including the outside design language, which looks much better. The inside gets fully updated with a more modern look and modern tech, but at the end of the day, the Kia Niro is just a simple car or crossover or hatchback, depending on how you look at it. But yeah, to me, this is just straightforward car. For example, you have two drive modes to pick from, including Eco and Sport, and that's it. All right, so do the updates that Kia made to the Kia Niro finally make it an exciting option to consider? Should this be your next hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or EV? Let's find out. Let me give you a quick tour of the new Niro, the hybrid one specifically, and then I'll get back out on the road and tell you how it drives and whether or not if you should consider buying one. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe. All right, let's do this. All right, so let's kick it off like we always do and talk about how much this costs. The new Nero Hybrid that I'm testing here is the cheapest Nero that you can get, starting at $26,490. And after that, you have the choice of going for the plug-in hybrid Nero for $33,740, and then you have the fully electric Nero coming in at $39,450. Now, keep in mind the Nero EV is not eligible for the $7,500 federal tax credit since it's not built in the United States. The new US government legislation requires EVs to be built in the US to qualify for the credit, but since this and the EV6 aren't built here, the price you see is the price you pay. And if you're one of the many people out there that's not ready to plug in their car, let's talk about this hybrid. It makes a total of 139 horsepower and 195 pound-feet of torque, and it's mated to a six-speed dual-clutch transmission, but don't get too excited, that doesn't mean it's fast. So zero to 60 will take you a whole day, or more than 10 seconds, and you have a top speed of 106 miles an hour. If you want to go faster, you will have to go for the Nero EV, which will hit 60 in seven seconds. Now, if you're somebody who's looking for a plug-in hybrid, a hybrid, or an electric vehicle, and range is extremely important to you, the hybrid Nero is the one to go for because this will get a total of 588 miles on a full tank of gas, which if you think about it, is pretty damn impressive. Now, that does come with the caveat, the non-touring trims, the LX, the EX, and the SX, get an EPA-rated fuel economy of 53 miles per gallon, and on a full tank of gas, they will hit 588 miles of range. If you go for the EX touring and the SX touring, those figures drop to 49 miles per gallon combined, and a range of 479 miles. Why? Well, mainly because of the wheels. The two touring trims get 18-inch alloy wheels, while the non-touring trims get 16-inch wheels. As for the other two Nero models, the plug-in hybrid one will give you 33 miles of all electric range with a total range of 510 miles, and the fully electric Nero EV will give you 253 miles of range on a full charge. All right, let's take a quick tour of the inside. Now, forget everything you know or don't know about the Nero because this thing has moved into 2023 with a really impressive interior. Now, we'll talk about the tech in a few minutes, but let's just talk about the quality really quick. Usually, you would expect this interior to be pretty, well, crappy. You would expect it to have a lot of hard plastics and cheap materials. Well, that's not the case for the 2023 Nero. The interior is actually a really nice place to be. Just take a look at this dash. It's actually the soft touch, nicely put together rubber material. There is definitely some hard plastic in here, but even those sections are really well put together. And as you move around this cabin, you'll see that it takes some inspiration from the new Kia EV6. These seats are super, super comfortable for a vehicle in this segment. They don't feel cheap at all. And Kia says they are made of animal-free textiles and some other cool things like eucalyptus leaves, all the things that help reduce waste. Oh, and they also have integrated coat hangers in them, so that's kind of cool. Every trim of the Nero besides the base LX comes with heated front seats as standard. Ventilated seats are only on the SX and SX Touring trims. And the two SX trims will also give you a heated steering wheel. And right away, that's impressive to me because there are cars out there, I'm looking at you, Honda Civic and Toyota Corolla, that don't offer a heated steering wheel or ventilated front seats. 
Now get this, you get a 10-way power adjustable driver's seat on all trims of the Nero except the base model. And the two SX trims will also give you memory settings for the driver's seat. The passenger seat gets no love on any trim and is manually adjustable across the board. That said, every Nero from the base LX to the SX Touring comes with dual zone climate control and they all have that dual panel layout where you can switch between the climate settings and the media settings. And stop hating on this, I like this a lot. This makes for a very clean layout. You don't have to keep switching in between both. Keep this on climate if it bothers you and use the steering wheel controls for your media. Problem solved. All right, let's check out the legroom in the second row. You have a total of 39.8 inches of legroom back here. I'm about six foot tall. That is my seating position. I sit further back than a normal human being should. And as you can see, I've got a good amount of room. It is very spacious and very comfortable back here. You do get a set of vents back here, but you don't get heated rear seats. And that's just me finding something to complain about. That doesn't really matter, to be honest. Oh, and by the way, you get a sunroof on every trim of the Nero except the LX and the EX. All right, let's check out the cargo capacity on the Nero. Now, if you go for one of the two SX trims, you get the smart power tailgate. So you just walk up to the back, hold the key anywhere around the back area, and it will pop open. It takes a second, but it eventually gets there. As you can see, I visited Costco yesterday to get my LaCroix. But yeah, you have 23 cubic feet behind the second row, and you have 60-40 split rear seats. With the second row down, you have 64 cubic feet. All right, so let's talk tech. All of the Kia Nero trims besides the base LX come with a 10.25 inch touchscreen display. The LX gets a tiny eight inch touchscreen display. However, you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard across the board, but it is wired. So go ahead and complain about how it's not wireless. It's really not that big of a deal, people. If you go for the EX trim and above, you'll also get navigation as standard, which is pretty impressive. But yeah, this infotainment system is pretty straightforward and very, very easy to use. And while we're here, let's talk about driver assist tech. All trims of the Nero come standard with a rear view camera, blind spot detection, lane keep assist, lane follow assist, rear cross traffic alert, high beam assist, and all the other assists that you'll need. If you go for the EX trim and above, you'll get adaptive cruise control and highway driving assist, but I did notice that you are missing smart park or remote parking assist. Not a big deal. As for the gauge cluster, it's kind of digital. It looks pretty cool and is very informative and changes colors when you switch between the two drive modes that you have eco and sport. All right, so what exactly is this? A hatchback or a compact crossover? I think it looks and feels more like a hatchback. Let me know what you think in the comments below. That said, I'm just glad that the Nero now looks like something you can kind of be proud to drive around. And that's because the outgoing Nero looked like a bug with big eyes. This one here is more modern and stylish. It still sits in that awkward raised hatchback wagon segment, but still looks pretty cool. And Kia has some Avengers Assemble talk in their press release. So they say the Nero features a bold design inspired by the opposites united philosophy that infuses inspiration from nature with aerodynamic refinements. Right. But yeah, the bug-eyed headlamps have been replaced by these sharp looking headlamps, which are only LED on the SX Touring, although you do get LED daytime running lights across the board. Now from the side, you have something called the Aeroblade. It apparently directs airflow underneath the D-pillar. And you can get it in this black color here or leave it body colored. By the way, my test model here is colored in cityscape green, and I like this color quite a bit. I'm just not sure how I like that black Aeroblade. That said, on the back, it's pretty simple. You have these long vertical LED taillights that look pretty nice. Look at that. The clouds decide to disappear and the sun comes out just as I'm about to wrap up filming. Now, before I give you my opinion on how the Kia Nero drives, let me point out a few important daily ownership highlights that I'll have to show all of you. You have four cup holders, two in the front right there, and then you have two in the back in the center armrest right there. Here are the keys to the Nero. Just like every other Kia key, you don't have Smart Park on this, but you do have Remote Start. But yeah, I like Kia's keys a lot. Kia's keys, they're nice. Door closed down from the outside. And the inside, solid. Charging game-wise, in the front, you have a USB-C and A port, and you have a wireless charger on the EX trims and above. Those sitting in the second row have a USB-C port on the back of each front seat. And of course, let's do an indicator and horn sound test. Indicator first. Same old Kia Genesis indicator. Now for the horn sound. I haven't honked it yet, so let's take a listen together. Oh, that's solid. I thought it was gonna have some weak horn, but nope. By the way, while electric cars may be all the hype these days, hybrids are still the more popular option when it comes to efficiency. And as we saw earlier, range is not an issue here at all. Now, what does the Kia Nero compete with? Well, if you Google it, you will come up with the Toyota RAV4, the Mazda CX-5 and other crossovers. But come on, this is not that. Let's leave that job up to the Kia Sportage. This competes with the likes of the Toyota Prius, the Chevy Bolt, and when it comes to those two, 
the new Nero is finally an impressive option to consider. Again, there's not much to driving the Nero, it's just a simple car to get you from point A to point B in one of the most efficient ways possible. In terms of daily comfort, it's not bad. It's what you would expect from a vehicle of this size. It's definitely smoother than the outgoing Nero. The suspension doesn't feel as hard. It handles like an economy hybrid would, and it accelerates like one too. Again, zero to 60 for the hybrid will take you 10 seconds, so don't expect anything crazy there. This is not meant to be a fast car, although if you do pop it in sport mode and hit the gas, it will give you enough boost to take over somebody on the highway. Again, the most impressive thing to me about the Nero Hybrid is the range. It's crazy that you can get up to 588 miles on a full tank. I've been driving this around all week and I still have more than half a tank of gas left. If you're thinking of going electric because you hate going to the gas station, maybe consider buying this because you will still be going to the gas station less and you won't have to worry about range. Again, this will get 53 miles per gallon combined. I'm averaging after a week of driving a total of 42 miles per gallon. Not bad at all. That's very impressive. There is a new Prius on the way, so we'll have to wait and see how this stacks up to the King. However, after spending a week with it, the new Nero is definitely a very strong option. It's practical, it's spacious, it's got all the modern tech you can want from a car, and it will save you quite a bit of money if you're a heavy commuter. Either way, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit like, make sure you hit subscribe, make sure you follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. My handle is at Omar Drives. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace. I wonder if a Nero GT line will spice things up a little bit for this lineup because this is all about efficiency and that's not a bad thing, but maybe it needs some kick to it for people that want more performance out of a Nero. Sport mode, let's go. Come on, Nero. Oh yeah.